This morning's scripture is taken from Mark 12, verses 28 through 34. One of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating. Noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer, he asked, of, he asked him, Of all the commandments, which is the most important? The most important one, answered Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Well said, teacher, the man replied. You are right in saying that God is one and there is no other but him. To love him with all your heart, with all your understanding, and with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself is more important than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he had answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And from then, no one dared ask him any more questions. Here ends the reading of his holy word. Don't forget about World Hunger Sunday as well today. So in our scripture for today, we find a scribe coming to Jesus and asking him, Jesus, what is the greatest commandment of all? And Jesus tells him, the greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your strength, and all your soul. And the second is to love your neighbor as yourself. Now this in and of itself is something that I know that you have probably heard many times. And I'm guessing that you have heard many sermons given on this topic throughout your lives. And even if you're not someone that is familiar with the church or even Christian theology, these are two things that you have probably been exposed to at some point in your life. Both of these commandments seem like they would be such easy things for us to do. Well, at least the first part, right? We should find it easy to love God, but the second part of loving our neighbors as ourselves, that tends to be where we struggle more as people. So this morning, I want to talk to you about what it means to love God, and what it means to love your neighbor, and what it's like to love something that nobody else loves. And I also want to remind you of something that I think we have forgotten as modern Christians. So when we talk about loving God, when we are to love God with all our heart, all our mind, all our strength, all our soul, well, essentially what we are being called to do in this commandment is we are being called to love God the way that God loves us. You see, God has shown us that same sort of love. He loves us with everything that he has. He loves us more than any of his other creations. And we see the proof of that in the fact that he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to earth to die for our sins. And we see the proof of his love in the way that he has set things up for us in order so that we would be able to have salvation and be with him. And so this commandment of calling us to love God with everything we have, it is just really reciprocating the type of love that God has for us. Now, we do find it easy to love God when things in our lives are going well. And it is easy for us to offer up our praise to Him and our thanks to Him when everything is going great. But where we struggle with loving God is when things get hard. See, when there are obstacles in our lives that don't seem to want to go away, or we can't seem to find a way to push past something, that is when it becomes harder for us to offer God our love. 
But the truth is, in those moments, when things are hard for us, that is when God is loving on us the most. That is when he is right there in the depths of our despair with us. So let us try to remember to love God in those difficult times. And let us remember to turn those things over to him and to trust in him because he is with us during those hard times. And that is when his love for us is at its greatest. Now I want to ask you a question and I want you to just think about it for a second. Is there something that you love that everyone else around you seems to hate? And I know that that may seem like kind of a weird question, but just think about it. Now, when I thought about that question, there are two things that come to mind right away off the top of my head. Two things that I seem to love that most people seem to hate. And the first thing is lima beans. Now, I love lima beans. I've loved lima beans since I was a little kid. And I think it's probably because I spent a lot of time in nursing homes as a child, eating the food that the older people would eat. So I've always liked them. The other week at the apple butter boil, uh, if you happen to get any chicken corn soup, you may have found there were lima beans in the chicken corn soup. Um, that was an accident that happened. Someone accidentally put a bag of lima beans in there. But I didn't view that as a mistake. I just thought it was a bonus. All right, extra lima beans. Now, the other thing that I seem to like, that maybe, and maybe love is a strong word here, but I'll go with like, that others don't seem to like at all, is the smell of skunk. I cannot explain it to you, and I have no reason why I would like something like that, something that's so smelly, but it's never something that's bothered me. So what is the point of this? Why am I telling you these things, that I love these things that other people hate? Well, I tell you this because in spite of what others may think, and in spite of what others may feel, I cannot help but love those things. And you see, that is the love that God has for us as well. In spite of ourselves, in spite of the way that we act, in spite of the way that we rebel, and in spite of the feelings that we have as human beings, God loves us in spite of all of those things. So brothers and sisters, we are not unlike lima beans, and we are not unlike smelly skunks, because there is no reason that God would love us so much, but yet he still does. Now, the second thing that I wanted to talk to you about this morning is the idea of loving your neighbor as yourself. And I know that this is something that we have talked about in the past, but I want to talk to you about something that I think we've forgotten about as the modern church. And it is that the gospel of Jesus Christ, the plan to love God and to love your neighbor as yourself, these ideas, when Jesus brought them forth, especially the idea of loving your neighbor as yourself, that was a big change from the way of the world at the time. And indeed, Jesus takes this idea even further, not just to love your neighbors, not just to love God, but in Matthew chapter 5, verse 44, he says, But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Now, it was a far enough reach for the Israelites to hear Jesus preaching to love your neighbor Remember, they were the people that had been set apart by God. They were the people that for generations had fought against their neighbors to conquer their lands. And now not only is Jesus telling them to love their neighbors, he is telling them to love their enemies as well. See, this would have been completely shocking to them to hear. The idea to love others as we love ourselves truly was at the time when Jesus spoke about it revolutionary. So what does it mean to be revolutionary? Well, revolutionary is defined as involving or causing a complete or dramatic change. Now, when we think about the word revolutionary today, there are generally two things that pop into our minds as Americans. The first being the Revolutionary War, which fits the definition, right? A complete or dramatic change in this case, a complete or dramatic change for our country. The second thing we think about is we find ourselves thinking about political revolution 
Or we hear revolutionaries in other countries are trying to bring down a government to revoke a change into a different style. Well, brothers and sisters, the gospel of Jesus Christ is revolutionary. It has been since the first day that he preached it, and it is still so today. The love that Jesus Christ has showed to us is something that can bring a dramatic change in the people that accepted it. And the gospel of Jesus Christ is something that can bring a dramatic change in whole systems inside the world when enough people believe in it and live it out. Now one of the most thing, amazing things about the word revolutionary is if you actually look at the word revolutionary, the word love is actually inside that. R-E-V-O-L-U-T-I-O-N, revolution, backwards, L-O-V-E is in there. You see, I know that there are people that are calling for a revolution in this country today. I know that there are people saying that the only way to change things is through violence. Well, brothers and sisters, I believe that we need a revolution as well. However, I am not going to stand here and advocate for violence. I believe that we need to get back to the root of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That we need to begin to see that we are part of a revolution as well. A revolution of loving God, loving our neighbors, and indeed loving our enemies. Now when I talk about this revolution of love, I am not talking, talking about a hippy-dippy free love ideals of the 1960s. I am talking about a love that is so much greater than any of that. So I'm here today to say to you that we are to live our lives by that commandment that Jesus gave us so long ago, to love God with everything you have, to love your neighbors as yourselves, and to even love our enemies. Not just those people that everyone likes, not, but the people that are the lima beans and the skunks of this world, the ones that have been forgotten or downtrodden by others. And if we can love them in the ways that Jesus has commanded us to love them, if we can do that, then we can begin to effect change in this world around us. I have two thoughts that I want to leave you with today. The first is this. In our Operation Christmas Child video today, they talked about taking those boxes to the ends of the earth, right? Taking the gospel of Jesus to the ends of the earth. And that is a great and wonderful thing to want to do. But I will remind you of this. The ends of the earth start with one single step outside of the doors of this church. That is where the journey to the ends of the earth starts. One single step. The other thought is this. Dr. Martin Luther King once said, darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. So if you are tired of seeing the darkness in this world, then we must bring it into the light. And if you are tired of seeing the hatred in this world, then we must begin to show others the greatest source of love that the world has ever known. So brothers and sisters, my challenges for you this week are a bit more pressing than they may have been in the past. Who is one person that you can show the love of Jesus Christ to this week that may have never been shown it before? And how can you take the revolutionary gospel of Jesus Christ to just one person this week?